this is on. Oh, oh shit, it is on. Okay, yeah. What's up? How's it going? Uh, yeah, this is a Q and A uh, for those. Well, who knows who I am in this room? I don't know why you'd be here otherwise. Okay, if you don't know who I am, if you're just here waiting for the next panel or something, uh, I am Sung Won Cho. I'm a voice actor, also prosody online. And yeah, this is just gonna be very straightforward. Um, there's a microphone there. Uh, if you want to ask me a question, uh, just go ahead and line up. Yeah, let's uh, let's do it. <laughs> Otherwise, I will literally just sit here for an hour and do what. Yeah. Go green. Oh, go white. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Check, check. There we go. There we go. Right. Hey there, someone. Uh, hey. So I just wanted to ask you basically, what, what would you say inspired your sense of humor and your personality? Like, was it your childhood friends or family or what? What inspired my sense of humor and my personality? Um, I think for me, besides, you know, whatever I experienced watching and stuff growing up, I think just uh, my group of friends. Um, I still have a very close group of friends I've known since my. Mario fan fiction days when I was a youth. Yes, yes. Um, so I think, I don't know, for me it was just uh, hanging out with my friends, getting more confident over the years, and uh, also just e experiencing a whole lot of different comedic media that I enjoyed. I mean, I think stuff like Homestar Runner back in the day or, you know, things like that. Definitely a big influence on my sense of humor. So, yeah. All right, thank you. Absolutely. Hello. Uh, I was just wondering, um, you did a collab with Veronica Taylor before. How did you connect there? How that worked out? Sorry, say that again? Oh, you did a collab with Veronica Taylor for that Pokemon video on YouTube. Or like oh, Veronica Taylor, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes. How, how did that came to be? Like? How did that come to be? Um, I got connected to her through um, uh, an actor named Dave Vincent. Um, he, uh, at the time, had this company um, called Unlocked, and so um, he was like, is there anyone that you would want to collaborate with on this list? And I was like, oh shit, Veronica Taylor? I mean, yeah, I mean, and so uh, it was through him that I got to um, uh, contact her, and she was very game to do the skit, so it was through that, basically. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Hello. Hello. Uh, I was just wondering, because I know you've made a video before about sometimes you've been typecast for certain roles, and I was wondering, has it even been that your Korean background has led to you being typecast? Because even though voice acting should be, oh, it's acting, but you don't actually see them, so it should be very open and like welcoming. Do you feel like you've still had to experience that kind of issue? Um, I think it's gotten better. I don't think I've necessarily been only typecast in Asian roles, but oftentimes with like auditions, Sometimes I'll notice, oh, they're only sending me like Asian characters when I know that there are other characters that I could read for. Um, so sometimes that'll be a little annoying. I think it's gotten better over time, and also there have been more opportunities, you know, more diversity in character types. Um, so it's gotten better. I actually think I get more typecast. I get a lot of military guys, like. <laughs> Yeah, uh, one fun type casting is I get cast as cats a lot, like different cats. <laughs> but that I love. I, I, I want to voice as many cats as I can. Um, but yeah, I think in, as far as diversity and stuff, it's, it, there's a ways to go, but um, I think it's getting better over time. Great. So Thank you so much. Absolutely. Hello. Hello. Uh, speaking of cats, one of your most recent credits was that you got to voice Mordecai for the Lack Daisy animated short. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, because you did amazing in that, and I was wondering what it was like to finally give proper life to that character after you did the fan dubs for that comic like 10 years ago on your YouTube channel. I was wondering what it was like to finally give proper life to that character. That was the craziest shit ever. Uh, <laughs> so I get an email. So for those of you who aren't aware, any, who here has seen the Lack of Daisy pilot? Okay, like a good number of you. Uh, check it out on YouTube, it's amazing. It's basically a full animated pilot for a webcomic um, called Lackadaisy. Uh, and for those of you, who's been following me since like Tumblr? Anybody in here? Ah, the OGs. Well, 
for those who are, I don't know, Zoomers or whatever, <laughs> Tumblr was a thing. Anyway, uh, so um, yeah, I, I had, I, when I was first starting out, aspiring voice actor, just making, you know, fan dubs online, uh, one thing that I made was were these lackadaisy dubs because I was such a big fan of the comic. I've been a fan since like Live Journal. Any, does that, any of you, yeah, Live Journal? Yeah? Yeah, we're all dying. Uh, I get older every day. But um, so I've been following that comic since for like 15 plus years or something. Uh, I have been a fan since the early days. And um, Tracy, the creator, she was very kind uh, in the, in the ba back in the day to like reblog my comic dubs. And she was very complimentary. Um, and so I honestly. She helped me a lot back then because I had before that I had no audience. No one knew who I was, but um, She was very kind about sharing my stuff um, flash forward like to this was God, Like st Let's say eight nine years later. I get an email from the director uh, for lackadaisy and they're like hey um, so Tracy uh, your version of the character is her headcanon for the character. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god. Uh, I was like, um, and they were like, would you be interested? And I was like, yes, absolutely. One <laughs> so for me, it was definitely a very surreal sort of full circle thing, right? Of This was something that I was a huge fan of since I was in high school. Uh, been following it for 15 years. You know, did fan dubs and to be Asked not only asked to play the character officially, but to be told that ah yes, what you did is how she hears the character in her head. It was like you know some of the greatest praise anyone could give. So I was very grateful to her. Um, so yeah, that's how I was involved. Uh, it's, there's actually a YouTube comment that a bunch of people have noticed that on one of the fan dubs from like 2008 or something. Someone's like, oh man, if there, or I think I wrote, oh, if there were ever an animated lackadaisy, I would lose my shit or something like that. And now everyone's commenting on it like, you did it, you did it, you did it. <laughs> like, so that's, that's how it happened. Awesome, thank yeah, you, yeah. man. Hi, uh, been Hello. a fan for a while. So uh, I, I know like the, all the King Dragon skits are probably your most like popular stuff on the channel. So mm -hmm. I'm just curious, like if you had the time and the resources, would you want to make a game around all that King Dragon stuff? Interesting. Um, if anyone were stupid enough to <laughs> finance it, yeah, I would not say no to, yeah, you wanna make this a video game? Uh, I mean, absolutely. Um, obviously no concrete plans too. I think making a game is very hard. I think it, you know, I know a lot of people in the indie game biz and you know it takes so much work and so I would want to just make sure that it was something that was being done right you know paying people fairly and stuff so it feels very ambitious and I feel like if anything not that this isn't any easier but maybe like a board game or card game version could be fun um, there have been talks here and there of things like that or the cow stuff um, <laughs> no nothing concrete yet but uh, the answer is if if it ever came along like the right people, the right, and I felt like, yeah, this would be a good thing, then yeah, I would, I would be down. All right, thank you. Yeah. Hi, uh, Soonjwin. Mm. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I was just wanted to ask, uh, when is the next season of Cherim Anime? <laughs> <laughs> the next season of Cherim Anime. Uh, that is whenever I feel the inspiration for the next one. Um, I, I will say there, there were talks of a potential manga version, but uh, <laughs> it didn't work out, but uh, who knows? Uh, maybe, maybe at some point. Uh, but I will say there were actually serious talks of making a manga version of it at one point. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. Okay, thank you, Sung Woon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm just curious how working on Blackberry was. Mm, uh, who here has seen Blackberry or knows what it is? Oh man, oof, okay. <laughs> uh, well, Blackberry is uh, my first live action film role. Uh, I worked, uh, I highly recommend going to see it. It's in limited release right now in theaters. Uh, it's got like a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. The buzz is 
Uh, I got to work with um, like Jay Baruchel, Glenn Howerton, uh, Rich Summer. Uh, it was very, very fun. Um, for those who, does anyone know Nirvana, the band, the show? Okay, so the Matt Johnson is one of those guys and he's the director and writer of the film uh, and he's a genius. So getting to work with him, um, getting to work with, you know, big actors and uh, the part is really fun too. So have you have you seen it yet? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, what'd you think? I loved it personally. So. Okay. Yeah. What if you were like, it sucked ass? But no, no, no. <laughs> but uh, no, I I'm glad you enjoyed it. I I've seen it twice now. I went to the LA premiere and the Toronto premiere, and oh, nice. I loved it. Uh, I thought it was great. Even if I wasn't in it, I I would have loved this movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so all of you should go see it in this room. I go, you know. Um, but not just because I'm in it. I think it's legitimately a great movie. It's very fun, um, and it's a very rewarding experience. Like, I always get a little intimidated because in voiceover, you often don't have to memorize your stuff unless you're doing motion capture. Um, so I took it very seriously and, you know, worked very hard to, you know, make sure everything was down pat. I soon realized that not all actors do that. <laughs> Some of them don't memorize their lines, <laughs> and it's kind of interesting, but for me, it was important to to make sure I was had my stuff down cold. So, uh, but yeah, that was my experience on it. Thank you, appreciate it. Absolutely. Hey, um, my question is, um, what's the like most fun you think you've had in a role? Like, what what role have you done that you you just had the most fun with? Mm. Anyone to watch Ranking of Kings? Yeah, okay. How about the dub? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I was expecting like, hey, like one guy, <laughs> but um, uh, well, Kage, I play Kage in Ranking of Kings, and. One of my favorite roles I've ever done. Like I think, uh, just a character type that I um, don't often get to play. Well, that's not true, but I don't know. It's just so out of the box. And when I got the audition sides, they had, they had me. They were like, you can read any of these characters. But I saw Kage. I listened to it, and I was like, I think I know exactly how I want to do this. And I was fortunate enough for that they agreed. Um, I think that show is so fun and joyous to work on that it doesn't feel like work it just is like I just get to come in and have fun as as that character to me it's he's such a wonderful funny character that it just time just flies by when I when I play him so that's definitely one of my favorites I think thank you someone yeah hello hello, hello. as uh, a lot of people here I mainly got into you because of the King Dragon series uh, I guess my big question is what has been the toughest part of getting into voice acting? The toughest part of getting into voice acting? Um, I would say it's really just getting your foot in the door. Um, like, I think what I always tell people who are interested is you just kind of have to start proving yourself. Like, make stuff online that showcases your work. Uh, m you know, meet other voice actors who are also aspiring. I think a lot of people, they try to go like, oh, can I like, ask an already established actor to recommend me, and it's like, no, you can't do that because they don't know who you are, they can't vouch for you. In this, in this, in this industry, you're, you, know, you really have to vouch for somebody if you're gonna recommend them, and if they vouch for a stranger, and that stranger turns out to be, let's say, you know, inexperienced or inappropriate or whatever, it's gonna reflect badly on them. So I think um, it's just kinda getting, your, getting that initial momentum of, you know, making stuff, auditioning for indie projects, you know. Eventually what you'll f discover is a lot of people, especially my generation and even the, like, oh God, is there a younger generation now? I think, <laughs> oh God. Well, anyway, um, you'll notice that a lot of them also got their start doing stuff online. Like it's getting more and more common. Um, and sometimes people will be like, oh, who's this new guy? And I'll be like, oh no, they've been doing this for like 10 years. Like I know who they are, they're great. Like they just happen to finally get their big break. but. Yeah, for a lot of people, it just it's a long period of just grinding away, getting improving your skills. I always tell people you have to. I think a lot of people, not to ramble on about this, but they always ask, "How do I become a voice actor?" As if it's like something really quick and easy to. Like, oh, there's like a thing I just need to know, and I can just do it. And no, it, it's something where it takes a long time, usually, unless you're very lucky. Uh, it takes a lot of hard work. And I always tell people, you have to really, really, really want this. Because sometimes I've, I've known people who are like, I want to be a voice actor. And then 
they see how hard it is to not only get in, but to also maintain a career, that they go, you know, I didn't want this as much as I thought. Like, I think, and I always tell people, there's nothing wrong with doing voice acting for fun, right? Uh, make, you know, just do fun shit with your friends, right? You don't have to do it as a job, but if you do want to do it as a job, you just have to be, have to be prepared for it. It's very hard to get in, and it's almost equally hard, because once you get to a point where you're established, it's like, great, now I have to audition against every other voice actor. Maintaining the work is just as hard. Um, so I, I would only recommend it to people who are truly, deeply passionate about it, because um, you're going to need it. Uh, I don't want to be discouraging, but that's the, the honest truth. But yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, um, I know you from your like Vine and um, Instagram and YouTube sketches, mm -hmm. and I wanted to ask, what do you think was your, uh, what do you think it's like the sketch that you were most proud of? In the Vine era specifically? Uh, yeah, in the Vine or the YouTube era specifically. I mean, pick your poison. <laughs> I think I've answered this before, and I think the Detective Pikachu one I really like. <laughs> uh, I really like that one. Um, I, but I will say, some of the recent Pizza Brothers stuff, uh, <laughs> I've had a lot of fun. I wasn't sure how anyone would react to that stuff. I was like, am I the only one who's gonna think this is funny? But uh, it's been fortunate. I'm, I'm glad that people are getting it. So I would say some of that stuff, um, Detective Pikachu. Uh, I did a Sears commercial one that I really liked. Uh, so yeah, I think those are some of the ones that I, I like the most. All right, thank you. Yeah. Hi, uh, congratulations on Blackberry. Thank you. Well, um, my brother saw it and liked it, so I'm probably going to go see it soon. I was curious how that sort of came about. Like, were you actively looking to get into live action acting, and now that the movie's doing well, is that something you're planning to continue to pursue? Um, live action acting, uh, well, I'll answer first. How I got it was I actually just got an email from the director, and I believe he had seen me in Anime Crimes Division, which was a, a web series I did with Crunchyroll for like two seasons. Um, and he was also familiar with my work uh, online as well. Um, so I, and I'll, I believe he also is friend, like friendly with Freddy, who was the director on it. So I th I, he just sort of reached out. And I wasn't sure if it was legit at first. I was like, who, what? Like, it was just like a cold call email. It almost looked like a junk mail. And I was like, is this actually him? I like, texted Freddy. I was like, is this? the guy from Nirvana, the band, the show, and it was, so um, he just was like, I think you would be perfect in this specific role. I had you in mind for it, so I was very fortunate for that to come to come into play, but I think what led to that was, again, Anime Crimes Division, I think, sort of showed, introduced him to who I was. Um, and then what was, your, what was your second part? Are you planning to continue? Oh, planning to, yeah, uh, live action stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think for my attitude with live action stuff is uh, it's like if you'll have me, I would love to do it. Uh, voiceover is always going to be my my true passion. Um, like if I ever stop booking voiceover, I think I'd be really really upset or sad about it. But if BlackBerry is the last thing I ever do, I'll just be grateful that I even got to do stuff in the first place. There's like another live action thing I did that it's just like a small part, but it's not. It got kind of the show, the mer whole, all the mergers kind of messed it up and it was supposed to be out already and it's not already, so um, that'll be out at some point. But I guess, I, you know, I, I do audition for stuff. Um, I've gotten close to stuff here and there and I do have like, you know, uh, specific agents on my team who are who focus in the live action realm. Um, so the answer is yeah, if, if uh, anyone would wants to cast me, I, I do enjoy it quite a bit and would love to do more. Awesome, thank you. Yep. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes. So uh, my favorite of your skits on YouTube is the when you have a really good turn on, in a card game. Okay, yeah. So I, I guess my question is, how did you come up with the cow card game? Because it's my favorite. How did I come up with the cow card game? I, I think it was just... I was like, okay, I want to do a parody of card games. What's something really dumb that <laughs> I could just have fun building off of? And I, I don't know, I guess like cows and milk and stuff came to mind. I think it was like, just what's the process that has like different steps? Because I think that's the one that has like mm -hmm. 
the toll gates, or that might yeah. be a different one. Like toll gates That's and right. like stalking in the in the store and stuff. Um, and so I just thought of something that's like complicated enough, but still very boring. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then for me, what I love doing with the skits is just building off of stupid, like and making it more stupid. So over the years, it's just been building and building and building on top of a ridiculous concept. Uh, and it just sort of spun out from there. Yeah. Thank you. It was yeah. fantastic. Thank you. Hello. Hello. So I know you from like your short stays, but I really got into you when you started doing the reviews of like every single type of uh, sure. thing. Yeah. I just want to know is like, what was the what were the ones that were like either the most pleasurable? Like you're afterwards, you're like that wasn't so bad, and then afterward, or the ones that were afterwards, you just want to die. Or so most pleasurable, better than I thought, and die. <laughs> yeah. Those it, three yeah. categories. I mean, the one where I spent fourteen hundred bucks on caviar. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Gotta say, pretty nice. Uh, can't do that every day. Um, uh, anything with like potato chips, I just I can eat a prepare up like a thousand potato chips in a sitting. So I, I uh, like the Lay's or Ruffles or stuff like that. Okay, ones. Uh, God, I've done so many. I always forget which ones I've done. Worst ones were like, um, oh man, uh, <laughs> Cheesecake Factory was. <laughs> it was so long and it was so bad. Uh, Burger King's pretty bad. Uh, uh, Lunchables was pretty bad. Uh, the one I'm doing right now is maybe the worst one I've ever done. Oh, uh, no. Chef Boyardee is. Oh. That's in the works and it is. That's a teaser. It's genuinely miserable. Uh, <laughs> And then in terms of forgettable or okay ones, I, it, it's all, it all blends together yeah. for me at this point. But yeah, those are the yeah. highs. Those were the lows for me so all far. Right, all right, cool. Thank you. Absolutely. Hello. Hello. Uh, I just wanted to ask, what type of vo voice acting roles do you have the most enthusiasm for? And what type of ones are you kind of like, eh, you don't feel like you get to like, I guess like show your talent as much? Mm. Um. That's an interesting question. Um, I don't want to necessarily badmouth any specific project, but I think for me, the ones that interest me the most are ones where I can really dig into a character because there's a lot of, you know, uh, something like a Flack in Borderlands 3 where I really spend a lot of time with them, or Kage, like I spend a whole show with that character um, and just like. Because, you know, sometimes you do, like, guest spots. I do a lot of guest spots or, you know, recurring, semi-recurring, where you, you come in every now and then, but when you really get to dig in and, like, feel a character's arc and, you know, just spend so much time with them that they, you, you really immerse yourself in it, I think those are um, the ones I have enjoyed the most. Um, that or, again, just characters that um, are maybe more out of the box, you know? Um, I think a lot of people, when they first, if they're not super familiar with my line of what I've done in the past, um, they hear my voice and go, oh, deep voice guy. Okay, uh, give him, he's a soldier. I, I, sometimes that'll happen. Like, you're a soldier too. I'm like, that's fine. Like, you know, uh, I gotta pay my mortgage. But, uh, like, I think uh, people don't realize, like, not to toot my own horn, but I think my range is pretty wide. Uh, I think a lot of people are surprised at the types of voices I can do. They just assume I can do like deep voice guy. Um, so if it's something like that, and also if there's not too much to the character's personality, um, I think for me, uh, I would rather have, even though I just said I like spending time with the character, I would rather have a more interesting character who's in one episode than a really boring character who has five episodes. Mm -hmm. For me, the, if it's really good writing, really good character, I don't care how long I spend with it necessarily as long as it's something that I can be interested in and engrossed in, so. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Hi, so Delicious in Dungeon is in your top 10 manga, and yes. I wanted to know if you've seen the anime trailer that came out yesterday. I did. And if you could voice one character from the series, who would you like to voice? <laughs> I, when I when I'm asked these kinds of questions, it always 
hurts my soul. No, not not because of anything that's your fault, but I'm like, oh man, will I get to read for this thing? I have no idea, right? Uh, do you have a guess as to which of those characters I think would be fun? I have one in mind. You're I, a fan of the manga? Uh, yeah. I'm Who do you think I would be a good fit for? I think there's three that come to mind. Okay. Senshi, yeah. the Winged Lion, mm -hmm. and the Red Dragon. Mm. I yeah. think for me, uh, Senshi would Senshi. be, I would really like that. Mm -hmm. um, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. And anything's possible. But uh, yeah, I love that manga very much. It's very, very good. So um, <laughs> if I can somehow be a part of it, I would love that in that'd any way. That would be amazing. I'd love to see you as a winged lion. I think oh, that would yeah, be really yeah. interesting. That would, I would honestly take any part because I just love that manga so much. Thank you. Yeah. Of my YouTuber and streamer friends, what they've oftentimes told me the biggest struggles that they have with is when their less aware fans are hard on them and don't really understand them. And so when they're engaging with their fans, they, they feel that disparity. Mm. In this regard, what kind of challenges have you gone through when you're reading comments or when you're scrolling through Twitter, when you see the less kind side of your fan base? Mm. Um, I think my fan base is actually fairly positive. It's the ones who aren't my fans that are usually a lot more critical. Um, there are definitely people out there who really don't like me. Uh, I think they'll see, I don't know, a tweet I made or something, be like, this guy's a dick or whatever. Um, and that's fine. Like, I don't care. They're probably a dick too. But, like, you know, <laughs> I think um, over time I've just kind of gun you know if you if you like my work or whatever that's great and if you think I'm annoying that's okay like I I don't care uh, <laughs> so yeah I think it's, it's usually that kind of thing like some tweet I made eight years ago gets like resurfaced and like oh th he said this oh man I hate that guy and I'm like do whatever you want like <laughs> go outside go go touch grass go make your first friend like just go <laughs> go you know so, so that tends to be my experience. Like, but generally speaking, I think with my people who are actual fans of mine, um, I think they're. I think it's actually very positive. I, I don't really see a lot of um, things that like piss me off. It's always just people who are actively trying to like you know attack or mm -hmm. aggravate me. Yep. Hello. Hello. So um, you've talked about being a fan of this franchise on your channel before, and even I think did a voice acting for one of the fan translations. So I was just curious um, if you could like rank the main six Ace Attorney games from oh your shit. least favorite to favorite. <laughs> what would you? What would it be? Rank the first six in terms yeah. of my favorites. Yeah. One, three, two. Mm, five is on the bottom. <laughs> uh, ooh, four or six. I, I think I'm going to say how I'm feeling right now is six, four, five. Um, and that's favorite to least favorite? That's favorite to least favorite, yeah. Can you imagine if my least favorite was the first one? No, no, no. <laughs> no, the first one's great. If you think five was my fave? No. Uh, um, but yeah, no, that's, though, that's how I'd rank the, the first six. All right, thank you. Absolutely. Hello. Um, so I've been watching you since your Professor Layton and Phoenix Wright Conic dubs. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And so I was super excited when I heard your voice in a Gretzko. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to ask, what were your thoughts on season five? If you, mm. Did you watch it? I have not yet. Oh, okay. Okay. So what, instead, what's, um, how was it working on season three? As uh, Yodo. Uh, sorry? As Yodo. I love working on a Gretzko. Um, uh, I got, uh, Patrick Seitz is the director, and he's one of my favorite directors. He's so good, uh, really, really, like, uh, absolute pleasure to work with, and I think, for me, Hyodo was such a gift, because I had auditioned for other characters before, in, like, previous seasons, um, but Hyodo, I was like, I get, I know exactly how this should go. Uh, it was one of those where I was like, I think I got this in the bag. It doesn't always happen in this line of work, like, um, oftentimes, sometimes you get cast, you're like, really? I, okay, like, sure. Um, but Hyodo, I was like, I think I know exactly how to play this. Um, and I, I guess they agreed. Um, and I 
I'm, all, I'm my bias aside, I love the third season so much. Like, I think it's such an interesting, fun arc for, for Retsuko. I love the dynamic with her and um, uh, Hyoto and, and the OTM girls. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Hyoto shows up in four and five in little bits here and there, and it's always just like, yes, I, get, I, 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 I never expected more past three, so getting to be him in, in any capacity is always fun. I feel like he always, whenever he comes up, he always kind of steals the show a little bit too, which is fun. So uh, yeah, I, one of my favorite characters that I've played. Thank you. Yeah. Hi there. Hello. Um, I really loved your Bounding Light comic dub oh, that you just yeah. put up for uh, Jay Perrier. Mm -hmm. I was wondering um, what was the process, putting that whole project together, getting everybody to collaborate. Just curious. Mm. So first off, uh, anyone here know ProZD Plays Games? Any of you watch it? Okay. Go, just Google ProZD Plays Games. It's my Let's Play channel. It's, uh, I think it's, I'm very proud of it. I think we do a lot of fun stuff on there. But uh, my uh, co-host, Jay, uh, has a comic called Bounty Light. Um, and I'm going to do him a favor here. He's doing a Kickstarter right now for the second volume. Just Google Bounty Light 2 and uh, go, go pledge and say hi to him or something. You know, he, I think he'd really appreciate it. But um, yeah, uh, so I, as a surprise for him, I um, did a whole comic dub of a scene from the graphic novel. And it involved uh, getting his penciler in on it, getting his editors in on it. Uh, and then uh, calling in a few favors from some voice actor friends of mine, uh, and also um, invaluable assistance from um, my friends Elvis and James who are doing the editing on the um, video and audio. But I think what uh, a testament to Jay is everyone was just like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, you know, they're like, I'll do it for free, like no, no question. Nice. So, um, yeah, like uh, for I got, I got uh, my friend Erica Lindbeck to be in it, and she. Um, I, I had kind of like sneakily asked him in the past, if this character had a voice, who would you want? And he was like, oh, this would never happen, but Erica Lindbeck. And I'm like, oh, good to know. <laughs> uh, he never suspected a damn thing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a, I actually recently posted his live reaction on Twitch to it, uh, and it's very funny, because he had no idea. Um, and uh, Anne Yatko's in it, and she's fantastic too. Uh, yeah, it was just me sort of going, hey, you want to do this thing? And everyone just being like, yeah, uh, Jay's great, absolutely. Um, and then just sort of piecing it together from there. All right, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey there. Hello. So I noticed that you voiced, a voiced and done a couple of ads for the card game Shadowverse. And I mm -hmm. was just curious if there's any cards that you've voiced for or voice lines that you've done in that game that have either stuck with you or that you remember. Mm. I think for me, I mean, Vasaraga from Grand Blue appeared in that as, as yep. a card, and I thought that was fun. <laughs> um, I always love playing Vasaraga, so that's probably my favorite. Um, but that series is fun. It's, it's always, like, fun to get to play as, like, very different. I think uh, the one that stands out is, uh, what's his name, Magna? Magna Saber? Magna Knight? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. That one, just, he's just a ridiculous, like, almost like Sentai hero just yelling. and So that, I think that one really stuck out to me. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. 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 Um, if someone gave you a magical box and you opened it and it's your most favorite thing in the whole wide world, what would that be? My favorite thing? Yes, just your favorite thing. Ooh. Uh, my cats, maybe? Uh, <laughs> uh, I love my cats. Um, my favorite thing. Um, my wife. <laughs> Uh, the cats are higher than the wife. Um, I, I don't know. I guess in the box, uh, not to be uh, sentimental, but I don't know. I just uh, family and friends. For me, for me, what I you know, and my my cats are my family as well. For me, it's just you know, spending time with them. I think is my favorite thing. So, it's it just be a a creepy diorama of all my family <laughs> and friends, uh, like in that episode of um, Pokemon where Sabrina turned them all into dolls. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Where are you, Steve? Steve got that reference. Where are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna imprison all of my friends and family into dolls and put them in a dollhouse in the box. So yeah, there you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Go green. 
Go white. So um, I got into Ace Attorney by watching uh, you do press buttons and talk with Mankey. Mm. Um, so I think we all know that Turnabout Big Top is probably one of the worst cases in the mm. whole series. Which one was your favorite to play through and voice? And also, uh, Wendy Oldbag versus Lotta Hart, who would win? Mm. I think for me, favorite, it's always like uh, the big finales, right? Like case four, case five in the first game, the last case in the second game, which might be the best case they've ever done, in my opinion, the, the um, um, Shelly the Killer one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you were asking a lot of hard versus who? Wendy Oldbag. Who's what? Uh, just who's, worse? Who's worse, yeah. <laughs> A lot of heart, yeah. <laughs> I have a soft spot for Wendy Oldbeck. A lot of heart is just, just awful, yeah. All right, thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Hi, Sungwon. Hello. Um, I, uh, sorry. Oh, no, Doing no, take, this your, off the cuff. take your time, take your time. <laughs> uh, I've watched a lot of your, like, skits and uh, your Let's Try videos. Sure. And, uh, the Dog and Rampa series that you did with Jay for mm. the Let's Play. Um, my question would be, uh, what would be like your ideal like voice part? If I- you were, ideal like, voice casting? part? Yes. In what? Anything oh, oh or? sorry. Um, like what sort of character? Like what? Like what sort of character or like what sort of voice is like your favorite? In general, like yes, uh, what yes. ki- that I've done or in the or would like to do. Um, Either. Um, for me, the most fun characters are the ones that are as far removed from me as possible. Um, like, whether that's in personality or in voice print or both. Like, um, so something like Kage from Ranking of Kings is so different from me uh, that it's really f- it's really fun to kind of just dive into that and be something that's so you know, larger than life and, you know, very different for me. Because I, I feel like the actual me is very low-key, very, you know, <laughs> relaxed and whatever. Um, so to get to sort of play, like, a really outlandish character or sassy character is, is a lot of fun. Um, and, yeah, I guess for me just uh, more characters that let me sort of uh, play, you know, play m- and expand in my range and do things like that, I think those are parts that I hope to get more of in, uh, in the future. I think another one, a recent one was like Reda Tosker in, in God of War Ragnarok was one that, um, it was a unique experience that I got to, you know, write for the character, which I've n- never done. Uh, and so it, he, I got to, they let me literally make write his backstory, his personality, his dialogue. Uh, and so I think something like that where I got to be such a big part of the collaborative pro- uh, process was also like almost like an ideal situation, right? Like normally you never mm-hmm. get that kind yeah. of creative control, you know, with a character. So I was very fortunate that that happened. So just any, any experiences like that, I think. Awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, first, oh, hold on. Oh, God. First, I just want to say thank you for inspiring so many people to at least like pursue voice acting, just to try it. I have been <laughs> grinding out a lot recently, mm-hmm. that whole scuffed closet setup, and uh, I had to ask, so at the start I'm getting a lot of like strenuous, kind of screamy voice roles, and I was going to say, uh, how do you ma- have you had like any really strenuous roles, and how do you manage that like stress on your voice? For um, screaming par- parts or anything that hurts the, the throat, I think what I always tell, let's say, newer actors is, and this doesn't necessarily have to be just for yelling parts, is when you audition for a character, um, make sure the voice you give them is something you can sustain for hours and hours on end. I think sometimes a rookie mistake is submitting something you're like, oh, this sounds so cool. Like, it's, got, it's really gravelly and it, it, it sounds yeah. so awesome. And it's like, okay, that's great. I mean, that's cool, but can you do that for four hours in a row without, I mean, uh, so there's that, right? Making sure it's sustainable, uh, what you are doing. Um, There's that. Also knowing your limits, I think, is very important. And also just being straight up honest with uh, a director. Like, if you need to take a break, or if you're like, hey, guys, I feel like if I continue 
I'm going to blow out my chords. I'm, or I'm going to, it's going to hurt. Uh, a, any good director will be very understanding of it. And like, okay, cool, let's take a break. Or, you know what, maybe we can move these lines to the next session. Um, oftentimes with, um, especially with video games, uh, they always leave the really loud yelling battle stuff at the end. And they'll usually do it in chunks. So it'll be like, okay, we get through a three hour set, three and, uh, and then the last half hour, that's gonna be your death cries, your battle cries and all that. Um, and they always try to, you know, make sure that you don't go too hard. So I think knowing your limits, making sure the voice you're doing is sustainable. Uh, just general hydration is good, you know, making sure you stay hydrated. Um, and then, yeah, I think um, a mix of all that is just sort of like, for example, I voice Basaraga and I did a fighting game and I also just recently did uh, the new RPG they're doing. And that was a lot of yelling. Yeah. Um, but for me, actually, yelling as that character, even though uh, he's this huge, you know, very gravelly, you know, he does these huge battle roars, it's actually not that bad. I've, because I've sort of found a way, actually, I didn't even find a way, even from the beginning, I was like, ah, I can do this and it doesn't actually tax me that much. Um, and so that was just something over, over time, because I'll be my, my first role way back in the day was a game called Apotheon. And uh, I actually, um, I, ho I had, you know, my first job, I was very, very green. And uh, I got sick after doing my battles cries because I, uh, I literally just yelled too much. And the next day, like, I lost my voice and I, I you know, had, I, I think I even got like a cold or something. Like, it was that bad. So it was after that I was like, okay, you need to not do that again. Uh, and you need to learn how to. And so I think over time, just experience and learning. And also, I think also just doing also, I think you just sort of get better at, oh, I know how to do this now in a way that doesn't hurt my throat too much. Um, and if it does hurt your throat, like a lot, then it's not, I would, I would tell actors, don't, you should not submit that as your audition in the first place, if you know it's gonna hurt. Um, it's only every now and then, it's very rare now where I'll have a session where I actually am like, whoa, hold on. Uh, it happens every now and then, but most of the time, uh, I think just my overall experience has helped me to avoid that. Okay, thank you, I'll yeah. keep it in mind. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Great cosplay, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you clapped with Drawfee several times before. Mm -hmm. um, if you're ever to clap again, wh what type of prompt would you give the hosts? What type of prompt? Yeah. Anyone know Drawfee? <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are the absolute best. I love collaborating with them. I don't even know what I don't know what prompt I would give them because for me they can. I'm just amazed how well they can do anything, even the stupidest stuff that I throw at them. Like <laughs> I'm just like amazed. So, uh, but I guess if, if I had to make them do something, I don't know. I, I think just uh, some of them I think excel at this, uh, but. I don't know, just some anime shit, I guess. I'm, 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 I'm a big weeb, so uh, making them do, I don't know, uh, who, make them do versions of Chihaya Furu, something that <laughs> is so self-indulgent for me, like that's yeah. my favorite anime. Anyone watch Chihaya Furu? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, yeah. The, in a perfect world, everyone would be like, yeah, Chihaya Furu, go watch it, it's amazing, but um, yeah. And I'll just, I'll just make them do fan art of stuff I like. Uh, yeah. And then they'll be like, great, you're not, on the, you're not back on the show after <laughs> this. But yeah. All right, thank you. Yo. Okay. What would you say is your favorite character from Lack of Daisy? Favorite character from Lack of Daisy? Yeah, or favorite characters. Take a wild guess. I mean, <laughs> I'm asking for a friend, brother. Yeah. Uh, it actually is Mordecai. I really? Ev I mean, he's great. I love Victor, too. Um, those two were always my favorites. So, but Mordecai, just everything about him, I I love. So, uh, even before I was cast as him, he was always my favorite. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Sung Won. Hello. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, my question was kind of similar. A similar question was asked previously. Um, so, I wanted to ask this question because at one point I was asking myself. Uh, where where am I in my life right now? Sure. I'm watching the Cherum guy eating dirty Burger King items mm. on the <laughs> menu. Um, where do you get the inspiration? Do you have like a list uh, that you look at? 
that you uh, know, like, oh, I'm going to try this place next. Oh, for, for the food stuff? Yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to ask, like, a really deep philosophical question. <laughs> 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 you were like, Where, I don't know what I'm doing with my life watching this. I was like, oh, do you want advice? No, I love, I love that this is the question. Um, <laughs> honestly, uh, I just asked Twitter. Um, <laughs> like, I'll just go, what do you guys want? And then I'll just count, kind of count them up and see what people are interested in. I do kind of keep a list of, like, stuff that I know has been asked before. Um, there's stuff that, like, I think would be fun, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I generally just ask Twitter and see what oh, they okay, say. okay, yeah. I thought maybe there were some other, uh, variables, but okay. No, I'm very simple. All right, thank you, yeah, thank yeah. you. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, two questions, or not two questions, one statement. Uh, how bullshit is it that you're not in the Walk of Fame? Uh, and two, um, current anime recommendations. Current, okay. And what was the first question? Why am I not on the what? Uh, how bullshit is it you're not on the Walk of Fame? Oh, the, for the voice actor yeah. autographs? I think that's because I offer free stuff. I think. <laughs> I do, do any of the voice actors that offer like free anything? Okay. I actually think that's why. Okay. Because um, if you go to my autographs, I have stuff to sell, you know, but it's optional. Like I will take selfies for free. I will sign whatever people, if anyone brings me something, I'll sign it for free. Uh, so I believe that is why I'm in a separate section. Um, Cause I'm so generous, no. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so that, so that, I believe that is why, cause normally I am, you know, just with the other voice actors. Um, so there's that, I, don't quote me on that. I, have no, I don't know exactly why, but I think I was told that by somebody. Um, and then uh, current anime recommendations. Like stuff that's current, like recent. I mean, it could be, or just Chihayafuru. Stuff. Watch Chihayafuru. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. Um, I mean, some just my all-time faves are like Monster, Mushishi, uh, Silver Spoon, um, Sound Euphonium. Um, those are some of my favorites. I'm very behind on new stuff. I don't watch stuff seasonally. A uh, well, recent one I really enjoyed was Bochi the Rock. I thought that was great. Um, but I'm always like three years behind. Like everyone, I, I went to Japan not that long ago for a vacation and I was like walking through Akihabara and like, wow, I don't recognize. Who are these people? Uh, what's <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen, Demon Slayer, Chainsaw Man, Spy Family, I haven't seen any of that. So I'm like, wow, I'm old now. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, I'm I don't keep you're up with anything. You. I, and it's not that I don't have any interest in those shows. I, I hear they're great and I would like to watch them at some point, but. I just don't have time, uh, so. Oh, Ranking of Kings. Ranking of Kings is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm in it, so I was slightly biased, but even if I wasn't in it, great show. So that's another recent one that I, I really enjoyed. All right, thank yeah. you. Oh, speaking of Butchie the Rock, <laughs> yeah. Hi, um, I know in your skits and things, sometimes you'll like reference older skits. Uh -huh. Are those like typically planned or on the fly or like this is a good time to yell out Archibald and ah, things like that? Nothing is planned ever. <laughs> uh, that would give me too much credit. Uh, for me, what's fun is if I have an idea for something and I'm like, oh, it's going to be an anime one. It's going to be a video game one. Okay, let's say it's going to go into the Cherim anime. I actually have a document of the lore that's been established already. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, okay. Because I really try to actually keep it fairly consistent, uh, which is so stupid. But I, <laughs> to me, that's the funny part of it, is that there's actually con continuity to it. And people have noticed that. And they're like, wait a minute. like That's referencing this video. And I'm like, ah, oh, you have too much time on your hands. Uh, um, so yeah, none of it is planned, but it is meticulously, once I have an idea, I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna put it into King Dragon, if I'm gonna put it into Cherim Anime, how can, what, what's been established and how can I fit it into there? Uh, and then it just sort of grows from there. Cool, uh, thank you. Yeah. Hey there. Hey. Um, I've been following you since the days on Tumblr. Big shout out to the uh, shipping skit. That's literally one of my favorite videos of all time. Nice. Uh, Huge congratulations, you just met, uh, brought it up, the Basaraga role in uh, GBA Freelink, mm -hmm. which brings me to my question, what productions do you think you actually enjoy being a part of more, video games or anime? You can't say video game anime. Or anime video, video games game. or anime, which do I enjoy more? Yeah, which productions do you like? Um, not to sound diplomatic, but they're good for different reasons, but I would say, I think video games usually give you more time with the character. Um, and also, 
depending on the game, I think anime, because dubbing is involved, sometimes it can be, I actually like dubbing, but it can be more annoying on the technical side because you have to match the lip flaps. And sometimes it's like, man, it was a good read, but you missed a syllable. It's like, oh my God, okay, whatever. Like, so I would say video games just for that, just because you generally get more time with the character. There's usually a lot more dialogue. Um, and I think for me, if it's not dubbing, then there's more freedom, right? Like you get to kind of have more uh, of a spin on it. Whereas with dubbing, you're like, you're still constrained. You can still you know, have freedom, but you're still constrained to the time and flaps of picture or whatever. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Howdy. Howdy. So I was, at, I was watching some of your older uh, videos are on the Q&A, and I think you mentioned before that you were brought, you were asked before if you want to do any voice directing, but you decided not to do it because it was too much work. But I wanted to ask, is there, is there any qualities that you find in a good voice director? Ah, oh, interesting. Any qualities I find in a good voice director? I would say <clears throat> um, the, my, the directors I get along with most uh, are ones who aren't too controlling and precious about it. Like, I think sometimes some directors can be like, it's gotta be this, this is the only way to do it. Um, and sometimes I disagree, but you know, I think with a good director, there's an open collaborative sort of process, right? Um, that and also, with that said, if they want something specific, I like directors who can just sort of very succinctly explain. They don't just go on and on and on. Like they go, oh hey, can you just tweak this and do this? And I immediately get it. Um, that and um, I think just, a, for me, just a friendly, chill director makes all the difference. Like not every director is nice. Um, I, I think the majority of people I've worked with, I've had a, you know, a good positive experience with, but every now and then you get a director where you're like, okay, you're kind of being a little condescending or you're, you're kind of being a little whatever. Um, so, but honestly, directors like that, usually their reputation just starts to build up that they're kind of annoying to work with. So I think the majority of directors who have just a, you know, who are friendly, who are, you know, receptive to collaboration, uh, those are the ones that I think I, I enjoy working with the most. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, hi. Hello. Uh, so you have a series on your channel that's don't ever ask me these questions <laughs> again. Yeah. <laughs> um, have people asked those questions again since then, or do we need another video? <laughs> um, I mean, I think those videos are a little tongue in cheek because I'm, I'm always gonna be asked certain questions. I know this and that's fine. But it has been useful because sometimes uh, people go, okay, I watched all of them and I'm not, I, they come to q and I'm not gonna ask any of those questions. I'm like, Oh, good. I wasn't actually trying to scare you or anything. <laughs> like, but it is kind of nice to have them because, yeah, I think I like getting new questions, one that are, you know, ones that I don't usually get all the time, uh, that are how do you get into voice acting, you know, blah blah blah, the ones that I always kind of get. Um, so they've been helpful in that regard. It was funny. I think um, actually uh, on BlackBerry, uh, uh, Rich Summer, who I I kind of knew casually but not well, uh, as soon as when I met him. He was like, okay, I, I've watched those videos, so I'm not gonna ask you those questions. I was like, you don't, it's okay, it's, it's fine. <laughs> not a big deal, but yeah. All right, thank you. Absolutely. Hi. Hello. So let's just assume that King Dragon actually becomes a game and you don't necessarily play every character. Who would you cast as each of those characters? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, who would I cast? And you know, I would just cast uh, all my buddies. Uh, I don't know. Throw Erica Lindbeck in there. Throw uh, Ray Chase in there. Throw um, you know Lucian Dodge, Erica Mendez. Just just all the all the voice actors I hang out with in my own, in my my free time. I just throw in there. Like, hey, you want to be in this dumb thing? Sure. You know, sure. Just cast my friends, basically. Would you cast them as any character specific? Specifically. N nothing comes to mind, but you know, I think Erica Lindbeck would really enjoy playing the character Sexica. Uh, <laughs> so I'll just I'll just leave you with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
Hi, yeah. Hello. Um, I, this is just a pretty casual question, but I'm curious to know, like, is there any type of anime and or show that that you know is like really garbage, just straight up um, garbage, but you like anyway, because it's your garbage? Mm, anime that is garbage that I still like. I don't think I have an interesting answer for that, because usually if it's garbage, I don't like it, but... Uh, <laughs> One that I have a soft spot for, not because it's garbage, because I, 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 it was, I, I think, it, but I don't know if it's aged super well, but I loved School Rumble back in the day. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't think it's like aged m marvelously since then. Not like for offensive reasons, but just over time, right? But I will always have a soft spot. Like, I loved that show in my youth, and I still am very fond of it today. Uh, but I think it's a good show. But I, I don't. It's not something where I'm like. Hey, give me anime recommendation. I'm not gonna give them School Rumble. Like it's like a 2007 <laughs> comedy, like that is a little dated, but I I still am very fond of it. Okay, thank yeah. you. First, just want to say thank you again for coming out this oh, year. Oh, absolutely. And uh, one of my favorite skits is getting into a conversation in a language you don't actually speak well. Mm -hmm. And my question regarding that is, are you? Ever on the lookout for Korean voiceover roles with you know the poss you know the hopefulness that Mon the Mon was that's getting more popular are actually going to get animated, or do you not actually speak that language that well? I don't speak Korean that well. <laughs> uh, that video is very true to life. Uh, I definitely don't speak it fluently enough to act in it. Um, I have I did like one tiny little thing uh, for a show called like Garo or something because Caitlin Glass was like hey, can you speak Korean? I'm like, no, but I can try. And I just, she's like, can you read this? And I, I literally called my mom and I was like, hey, how do you say, because I can read it, like, phonetically, but I'm like, how do you say this naturally? <laughs> and so she recorded herself, and I just copied her doing that <laughs> and sent it over. It works. <laughs> and so as, as much as I think, I, I don't think that would work in, in an actual role, uh, being like, hey, guys, hold on, I'm going to call my mom. Uh, <laughs> she'll do it, and then I'll just copy it. Although, oh, I did have to speak Korean in one, in a role for a cartoon, and I, I don't know how well, I think it was okay, but it, it's definitely something that um, I'm not confident in, uh, in enough to actually go for those parts myself. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Kamsahamnida. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, so I've seen a lot of your videos on uh, board games, mm -hmm. uh, board game recommendations and reviews, but do you have any tabletop role-playing game series that you especially enjoy? Uh, Aeon's End, I think, is great. Uh, Marvel Legendary, I really like a lot. Um, Clank series, I like a lot of deck-building games. Um, anyone here board games? No, not really. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So I think those are ones, um, I've been, we've been playing through a bunch of legacy games, like we're playing Betrayal Legacy right now. Um, we finished the Pandemic Legacies. Uh, so those are some of my favorites, I think. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, we're almost done, huh? Okay, shit. Well, uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have uh, autographs tomorrow, and I also have uh, Rating Anime Wives and Husbands Live tomorrow. So uh, check the schedule for those. But, uh, yeah, thank you for coming, and uh, have a good con, guys.